Florida tops the list of American states when it comes to the number of invasive species, with more than 500 problematic invasives found in the state and close to 2,000 non-native species in total. Invasive species in Florida are putting native wildlife at risk in many ways, but especially through predation. For example, feral hogs eating the eggs of endangered sea turtles, or Burmese pythons causing a 90% decline in medium-sized mammals like opossums and raccoons in parts of the Everglades. What isn't often mentioned when we hear about the invasive species problem in Florida is that it is just one symptom of a severely damaged ecosystem, one that is almost completely devoid of its native apex predators. The cause of the damage? You guessed it, humans. Where once there were more than 5,000 Florida panthers in the state alone, now there are only around 200 left in the entire world. Many others aren't even as lucky as the panther and are now totally extinct, like the Florida black wolf. The apex predators would have been the very species that kept Floridian ecosystems in balance, and had they been present and thriving, many of the invasive animals never would have taken a foothold in the state. We're going to look at three of these predators and dive into how they could help fix Florida's invasive species problem. First up, we look at the one that still clings on in part of the Sunshine State, the Florida panther. The panther is a subspecies of cougar, endemic to America's southeast. In the 1970s, as little as 20 or 30 panthers remained, but thanks to conservation efforts, there are now just over 200. A decision was made along the way to introduce eight Texas cougars to strengthen genetic diversity and prevent inbreeding, something purists weren't happy about, but it had to be done for the health of the species. Florida panthers are classed as a keystone species where they are present and greatly benefit the ecosystem, helping to control native deer and indeed invasive animal numbers. We'll see later how allowing them to expand their range and introducing them to more of their historic range can help tackle the invasive species problem. As I mentioned before, the Florida black wolf is sadly no more. It was made extinct in 1908 due to overhunting, but the black wolf was just a subspecies of the next candidate for reintroduction, the red wolf. Unfortunately, the red wolf is critically endangered, with less than 20 thought to be living wild, their only population being in North Carolina. Thankfully though, there are around 270 red wolves in captivity, so total extinction is highly unlikely. The main reason we haven't seen many red wolf reintroductions to date is because, unlike the grey wolf, which will only really breed with coyotes when they can't find another mate, the red wolf readily interbreeds with coyotes. Coyotes are now widespread across the historic range of the red wolf, due to a coyote eradication attempt that totally backfired. I speak in depth about that in the video on screen if you want to check that out. As coyotes are present across the red wolf's former range, purists don't want to reintroduce red wolves, because their bloodline would be diluted through coyote hybridization. Personally, I think red wolf reintroductions should happen regardless. Hybridization amongst canine species is incredibly common, with at least 10 species I'm aware of having hybridized with others. Some very regularly, like the golden jackal, which is known to hybridize with grey wolves, African wolves, Ethiopian wolves, and domestic dogs. Hybridization isn't necessarily a bad thing anyway. It can lead to beneficial traits that help the offspring survive and even thrive better than a non-hybrid through what is known as hybrid vigor. Plus, there isn't really such a thing as pure blood red wolves. Red wolf DNA shows a lot of historic crossbreeding with coyotes. Now, onto the most controversial reintroduction, the jaguar. Until the 1800s, jaguars still roamed a large portion of southern USA, at least as far north as central California, though they likely went extinct in Florida much earlier, probably around 7,000 years ago. Jaguars, being an apex predator, would have been a keystone species in Florida until their extirpation, and could easily be again. So what effect would reintroducing these three apex predators have? Apex predators are considered keystone species for two main reasons, both of which will greatly help tackle the invasive problem in Florida. Firstly, they regulate the number of large herbivores in an ecosystem, which allows plants to flourish, which in turn allows herbivore biodiversity to flourish, which in turn creates a diversity of habitat types and brings in a diversity of predators and a rise in biodiversity of all forms. This was what happened when wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone for example, which I discussed in this video. The other reason is that they control mesopredators, meaning medium-sized predators. In the absence of apex predators, a phenomenon named mesopredator release occurs. This is when mesopredators become overabundant and as a result overhunt and cause population crashes in small animals like rodents, rabbits and ground nesting birds and all the species that had been benefiting from their presence. So how will these impacts apply to Florida? One of the most damaging invasives in Florida is the feral hog, of which there are more than half a million in the state. Their ancestor, the wild boar, is an ecosystem engineer where they are native in Eurasia. Their rootling for tubers, nuts and invertebrates helps aerate the soil, causes seeds to germinate and creates a buffet for all invertebrate eating creatures in the area. But even where they are native, if predators aren't present, they can actually be very damaging. 
overabundant boar caused so much disturbance to the soil through their rootling and eat so many seeds, nuts, invertebrates, small animals and eggs that they negatively affect biodiversity. That is even worse of course where they are non-native. This is certainly the case in Florida. All three of the predators we looked at could have a serious impact on feral hog population in Florida. In fact, all three already do prey on feral hogs. Florida panthers prey on them where they coexist in Florida, red wolves prey on feral hogs in North Carolina, and a jaguars prey on them in South America. Having three predators preying on feral hogs across a variety of habitats and with a variety of hunting styles could be exactly the thing that brings down the feral hog population. Of course, the one other native apex predator that remains in Florida, the alligator, would add to the areas and ways in which feral hogs would be preyed. Amongst other large non-native herbivores, there are chital deer and capybara. Deer are the primary prey for cougars and wolves across most of North America, so chital would certainly be kept in check. Capybara are preyed upon by cougars and particularly by jaguars in South America, who could do so in Florida as well, preventing this population from becoming an issue. Next we'll look at the invasive reptiles, because that is where Florida really comes into its own. Exotic reptile pets are very popular in Florida, and there are very few restrictions as to what reptiles you can keep in the state. This combined with the tropical climate in Florida has allowed escaped and released reptiles to breed and establish. There is a crazy list of reptiles that have been spotted wild in Florida, including the biggest snake in the world, the green anaconda, and the second biggest crocodile and lizard in the world, Nile crocodiles and Asian water monitors respectively. Luckily, none of those appear to have really established themselves and caused issue at this point, but many reptiles have. Most notably, Burmese pythons, of which there are tens of thousands and they have caused a huge decline in medium-sized mammals and prey on threatened birds as well. Black and white tegus and green iguanas are also some of the most common invasive reptiles. The Burmese python is amongst the three largest snakes in the world and the two lizards are whoppers as well, getting up to weights over 10 pounds and 20 pounds respectively. Jaguars are the big cats known to prey on reptiles most often and would take up the brunt of the work in controlling large invasive reptiles. In Latin America, jaguars prey on green iguanas and tegus and could be an effective means of controlling their Floridian populations. There is also a strong population of invasive caiman in the Everglades, a common prey item for the jaguar in South America. In South America, even large adult anacondas are preyed upon by jaguars and so the smaller Burmese python would no doubt be prey to the jaguar as well. Importantly, Jaguars could also prevent green anacondas and reticulated pythons, amongst other large non-native reptiles, from establishing in Florida. Though not anywhere near as widespread as the Burmese, they are both present in the Sunshine State, and it's a lot easier to nip an invasive in the bud than it is to eradicate it once established. I spoke earlier about the overabundance of mesopredators that occurs when apex predators are removed from an ecosystem. In Florida, many of the most problematic invasive predators are mesopredators, like feral cats, red foxes, many of the invasive reptiles, and one could even argue that coyotes are invasive. Coyotes weren't native to Florida, but are now found in all 67 counties there for two reasons. Firstly, the failed eradication attempt I mentioned earlier, which made them spread all across North America when once they were only found in the center, from southern Canada to south Mexico. Secondly, they were capable of colonizing the whole continent because wolves had been eradicated, as was the case in Florida. If jaguars and red wolves were reintroduced, and Florida panthers reintroduced to more areas, they could bring populations of invasive mesopredators down significantly and help small and medium-sized animals that are being overhunted to recover. As I mentioned earlier, there would no doubt be some hybridization between red wolves and coyotes, but red wolves would still reduce the number of coyotes in Florida, as wolf packs do not tolerate coyote packs in their territory. Though I don't think reintroduction of Florida's apex predators would fully eradicate many of the invasive species. They would undoubtedly bring down their populations by a significant amount, potentially to a level that Florida's ecosystems could sustain. Apex predators are vital for any ecosystem to function correctly and bringing down numbers of damaging invasives, especially feral hogs, Burmese pythons and mesopredators would restore balance and bring some much needed respite to the native wildlife that are being overhunted and outcompeted. Would you like to see apex predators reintroduced to Florida or do you think the ecosystems are too far damaged for them to have any benefit? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel to keep it alive and help it grow. Thank you, as always, for watching.